Hey everybody, good morning, we're back, and a very special guest joining us in studio now, and it's John Judkins, Trailblazer, head basketball coach. Judy, good morning, thanks for dropping by the Fan Sports Network, Finley Hyundai Studios, man, it's always good to see you. Yeah, I love this new studio, it's nice. Yeah, we got a locker just for you over there. Oh, you yeah. can put John Judkins <laughs> wow, in it. Good. Well, you got any extra Trailblazer jerseys? We need, we need a jersey. <laughs> oh, yeah. We don't have any left, they're all gone, they're, all our players took them. All the scholarships the whole, are gobbled yeah, up. Yeah, all- yeah, we can we, put some we Trailblazer swag gear in there for you, Juddy. Okay, we'll, <laughs> we'll get some in there. Here you go. This was, we wanted to have you come in, talk off-season hoops, because this was kind of a reload off-season for it you. Really you was. had, you know, some guys leaving the portal, some key guys graduate, so you had to recruit your tail off. You you and yeah. all your assistant coaches were hitting the hitting the pavement this uh, off-season. Well, we, and we normally do. I mean, it's, <laughs> people ask me all the time, like, what do you guys do in the summer? It's like, oh. If you only knew, you should come with us sometimes, Dev. You'll realize how fun that is recruiting. It's it's fun, but it's a long, long days. I mean, you're in the gyms from seven in the morning to eleven at night. You know, sitting on those hard bleachers, and but it's fun. It's fun to sit and talk and and meet new people and 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 see some some good guys. So you're right. This year was. Uh, I mean, normally May is kind of mellow for us. Uh, not this year. I mean, we were bringing kids in. We had more uh, official visits this year than we've ever had. Uh, which is great. I mean, because everybody we brought here loved it. They love this town. They love, the, in fact, the kid we just signed uh, last week, he came, we took him to a breakfast place. I won't mention the breakfast place, but we took him there. And, and after we got done eating, they were kind of uh, low on staff. And then he's walking out and just, just talking to the guy. And he goes, hey, you set to seat those people? And he goes, yeah, I'll seat them. So he went over and sat up down, and put them down. Showed them. I mean, it's just, this. the community has been really good with these kind of guys. And he fell in love with that. He thought that was really cool. And, and I uh, felt like he was at home here. So, but again, we lost a lot. We lost, uh, you know, we only had two, we only have two back. We have uh, Tanner back and we have uh, Noah back uh, and the and we have our walk-ons. We have Cade and Stone back um, and Caleb, uh, which will give us some good, good, good minutes too as well. But, um, you know, just uh, started over. I mean, but it's a good thing, Dev. It's not, I mean, we lost some in the portal. I mean, we lost Trey, you know, Trey decided to, to spread his wings and see if he can go find some other place to play and maybe play more than he did last year because he's behind Tanner. And then um, Ajon and uh, Chol, we, we've kind of both agreed that it'd probably be a smart thing for them to go to a Juco and play, and 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 we understand that. So we didn't really lose a ton in the portal. The, the tough part was, um, you know, with Frank and Isaiah and Sell, um, those are guys that – and Trevin – those are guys that could have came back and played that had eligibility, but they graduated, you know? And so as a coach, as a parent, as whatever, our job is to get them to gra- to graduate. And uh, that's exactly what we did. And, and we were hoping to get them back, um, you know, but with this new uh, NLI deals and these new different things that they're trying to, to do, I, I totally understand what they're thinking. And plus a lot of them want to go get their masters. I mean, I know you had Isaiah on here and we just didn't have his, his master's program that he wanted. And, and uh, and so he he went you know that way. So really the two that we really really lost that we that that hurt I mean not hurt but couldn't do anything was was Cam our leading scorer and then Jacob um, you know one of the best years Jacob's had is all his whole five years he's been here. So it's hard to replace those. But boy we we've been uh we've been out hitting the hitting the wood finding players. You know do you, do you, when you're recruiting what, what feedback are you getting? I mean, you mentioned kind of the the story about the restaurant mm-hmm. and that they love campus and they love town and the community and people mm-hmm. have been so nice. But you know how much are, how much is the NIL affecting you guys winning and losing some of these recruiting battles now that you've been in this new wild west of yeah. college basketball recruiting for the last couple of years? Well, again, it's hard to you know. There's not a stat on there that tells you why we lost them or why we didn't get them, but. Um, you know, every time, every person we called in the portal, every single one we called, first question out of their mouth was, what NLI deal do you have? Mm. And it's just, mm. it's changed. And right now we don't. We don't have one. And, and uh, those listeners out there, <laughs> we want some. We want, we want to get some of these. We have to um, to be competitive. And, and you know, we, we've got some ideas, and we've talked to, to uh, Ken Beezer about some things that we're trying to do. Football's trying to do some different things as well. Um, we got it. We have to, we have to stay in there. Otherwise we're just going to get pushed behind and we're going to be way and way in trouble. So, so there's some things we have to do. Um, and we're working on that, but, uh, that's, it's just, that's just how the world's coming to. And pretty soon you're going to see, I mean, I heard a story the other day that, uh, some coach promised a guy an NLI deal that two or three really good players and they go there and 
that he goes, hey, where's, uh, after they sign, hey, where's our NIL? Oh, sorry, we don't have one. <laughs> you know, so there's probably going to be some more and more of those that, uh, you know, people think they have them or maybe just flat out didn't tell the truth. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. I see a lot of guys that enter their name in the portal and uh, go out and try to find something, and they realize there's nothing as good or better than what they already had, so they try to come back. That's, that's a tough one right there. You know, you put yourself in our shoes, a kid who leaves you, uh, goes in the portal, try to find something, and then wants to come back. It's like, well, uh, you know, you didn't want to be here in the first place, and now all of a sudden you can't find anything. You want something back. So it's it's a tough thing for us as coaches. Do we take them back? Do we not? And what do you do? You know, and so it's it's a it's a tough thing, but it's it's not going to change. I was kind of hoping it would. I wish the uh, the NCA they have so many dumb rules, um, but one rule they probably need to put in is is the NLI deal that. Uh, you know, maybe there's a certain amount of money they can get or even that the collectives, there's only a certain money they can get. Because right now the rich get rich and the poor get poor. And it's it's really tough on us being the third year in, going into our fourth year. Um, but we've made some great progresses, you know, from my, last year's team, what we did. And and people know who we are now. Um, recruiting, they, they know who we are. They've done research on us. They see what we've done in the WAC. It's, it's, been, it's been a cool thing. It really has. And, Coach, I asked you the question at the Stephen F. Austin presser after that game, the WAC tournament, and I thought, would this be a springboard, that win? And you're talking about the exposure being much higher. And I think that's a key factor in getting some of these young recruits you're getting in here. Angelo Kambala, and then most notably the guy that I've been tracking a little bit, Arik Demings, a three-star recruit out of mm-hmm. DeSoto, Texas. Mm-hmm. Were these guys that were attainable in past years, you know, as far as bringing in guys of this pedigree? Uh, I don't think so. I think you're right on. I mean, um, Angelo signed early for us. He signed in November. So, you know, we, we got on him early in the summer. Um, we had a lot of, there's a lot of schools. Weber state was on, there's a lot of them that were on him and we, we got him pretty early. He's a local, he's kind of local from Vegas, mm-hmm. which is, which is nice. He wanted to stay closer to home, which was, which was great. And then Eric, like you said, that one, I think just being in the whack was nice cause he's from Texas. Um, we've kind of had some good luck with point guards from Texas with cam. So, Sure. So we saw him, and he comes from an excellent, great program, and um, you know, one of the we, top high school uh, programs unreal. in the country, right? Yeah, it's unreal. A couple, unreal. couple weeks ago, we had our uh, little all star game at the end for the high school teams out here, and from Vegas was Angelo Kambala. Oh. He came up and played, and he scored. He, Oh yeah, just he can lit score. it up. It was yeah. like a fifty-point game from him. I mean, <laughs> just anywhere he touched the ball, the guy was not afraid to shoot it. No, he can shoot. <laughs> That's one thing he can really shoot in. You know, the, the thing that we were looking at him was, can he, could he play the point? You know, he's not, that's the only thing that hurts him a little bit is his size. Um, could he play a little bit of point? Um, you know, but he, he, he handles the ball good, but he could for a little while, but man, he can, he can really show, shoot it. So we really love him and Noah. We feel them at the two are going to be really good, um, you know, shooting the ball. So you're right. He can, he can fly and sh- fly out, shoot it, but you're right. The whack thing helped us a little bit. Like I said, beating Stephen F. Austin in that tournament. We, I was talking to, to Ben Ken Beezer yesterday, and we were talking about the tournament next year because we only have 11 teams now, you know, in the, the whack. And uh, with New Mexico State leaving and Sam Houston leaving. Um, and so I said, hey, what are we doing? Are we taking all 11 teams or are we taking eight teams? And they're trying to, trying to work it out um, to try to get the men and women together, to keep them together, but try to keep it in one venue instead of jumping around like we did last year, and, and he said they might go to eight. And I said, oh, if they only go to eight teams, that means three teams are out. You know, are you doing this for a money's sake, trying to save money, or are you doing this for the kids? For the, for the uh, you know, they always say it's, we do this for the kids. Well, if we're doing it for the kids, let's let's have all 11 go and yeah. do what most conference do. They have one and twos get buys, maybe sometimes even two buys. But I'll tell you what, that that last year for us was, was really fun, like you said, to be yeah. in our – being our first year to go to the tournament, um, you know, we were playing for something. Even though we couldn't go to the NCAA tournament, it, it was a whole different um, atmosphere in in February and and end of end of December or January. Just your guys were they knew there were still games to play. Where if you don't have that, if you're at the bottom of the league and you have a week or two left and you know you're not going, it's I mean, the motivation's tough. It's tough to keep them going. So hopefully. We get to take all 11, you know, and, and see how it goes. But they'll talk about this, them and the president coming up and see, decide what they what they want to do. But, what a, but that was a really fun week for us. Um, and it could have been, I mean, it should have been better. I mean, the lose, SCU losing, game. Yeah, losing by one like that on a couple of things that happened to us. We had chances and, you know, but that's all we, that's all you want is chances. And we, 
we had them and it was, it was a fun, fun year. And it was, it was sad to see it come to an end, but something that we can build upon <clears throat> something that we feel we can get better. Uh, this team's young, like you said, and we're going to take some, some hits, but I really like what I see. I like our, we're more, I think we're more athletic than we've, than we've been. Uh, it's just we don't have that maturity or that experience uh, that we had, uh, had last year. But, I, but again, I think Tanner, I think Noah, uh, I think these guys are, are going to step up and, and, and take that leadership position. You, we talked about, let's, let's touch, I want to get your take on a couple more recruits, and then we'll talk a little scheduling and some other things. But uh, we talked about Kambal and Demings, but tell me about uh, Beyond Riley, mm-hmm. uh, 6'6", 225 pounds, out of Hawaii transfer. And then uh, another big guy, you got Jalen Searles. Uh, is that to say that correctly? Yeah, yep. Searles. Yep. Um, and And he's he's a a kid that was at Southeastern Community College, so he's a JUCO transfer. Yeah, we hit the JUCO pretty hard. We got a couple of those guys. Um, he's really athletic. Jalen is long. Um, he's skinny. I mean, he weighs one eighty five. <laughs> I mean, he's he's a skinny guy, but man, he's really long. He gets to the rim. He's athletic. He jumps, you know, extremely well. He was. He's the favorite for the the. The dunk, dunk contest. contest, yeah, you, <laughs> season dunk contest. I try to get you to come to our high school uh, all star little thing. We had our little team camp, and he was there, and, and all the crowd started chatting him to try to get out there and dunk. And he he threw some down. I was like, "Whoa, look out!" So it was it was fun to see that. But uh, yeah, he's he's one I think is going to be be really good for us. Um, be on be on a kid again with the maturity being at Hawaii for two years. Um, you know, he understands the D1. He understands the travel. He understands how to take care of his body. Uh, he's already been one of our best leaders. He he kind of, <laughs> even though being here, he can just tell he's mature. He tells people what to, not what to do, but, hey, when things aren't, they're not hustling or not working hard, he'll tell them, you know. He'll, he's one of those kind of guys that will tell them, but he'll do it. He'll, he'll do the work. There's some guys that love to tell people what to do, but then they don't want to do it either. He's not that way. He, he gets after it. So I think he's going to be one that I like. He can play a lot of different positions. Same with Jalen. Jalen can play the three, four for us, uh, maybe even some two, which which is nice beyond the same. You look at him, he's he's kind of the Charles Barkley kind of looking body. He's big and strong, um, man, really, really composed. Um, he's, got to, he's got to improve his outside shot. He knows that. But, man, he's just a tough, strong, real strong kid. A uh, couple other big Sammy Howland, 6'11", 210 pound junior, uh, played at Fullerton College. Mm-hmm. What can you tell us about? You got to you got to bring him in. Um, he's got a story to tell. It's pretty crazy, really really crazy. So he's one that uh, you know we got late. Um, we love his. He's really long. I mean, again, he's he's skinny. He's yeah, he's skinny. He can run. It's pretty good. He doesn't. I mean, he doesn't remind me of Zach Robbins yet. <laughs> But Zach, kind of that, sc- Zach can that, score it. Yeah, it's kind of that's how his body is. It's like that. He can run. He's long, skinny, um, you know. But he he's got a story. It's it's pretty crazy to to hear that he he's. We're just glad he's still here on Earth. I'll just give you that. That's kind of how his story is. Um, but uh, we got him kind of late, late in the thing. But again, another JUCO kid. Um, you know, it's again like I told you before, Deb. The, we're still going to recruit high school kids. We're still going to recruit local kids. We still we want that. Um, but I'll tell you what, the high school is tough because you bring them in and they play really well that first year, they, they leave. They hit that portal and they leave. And then you bring them in and they don't play. They leave. They leave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so it's tough. And then, so we kind of have gone the juco route a little bit more because they don't leave. You know, they have two years left. They uh, they know they're so close to get their degree. Um, they they kind of want to stick with it. So. It's our recruiting's changed a little bit that, but we still, you know, we got some local kids here that we really like and we're going to be on and we've offered a lot of them and, and we're going to stay with those guys. We want them. Um, you know, that's, that's the whole idea, but it's tough. It's no question. I think people in St. George know, and I know you can't comment on them, but I can, uh, you know, Kyle Lemke at Dixie. I mean, I, we saw him and his coach has confirmed that you guys have offered and then Owen Mackey over at Snow Canyon, you guys have offered him. So I know exactly what you're talking about, but uh, we'll have to wait a year for, for those guys to see what they decide <laughs> to do. We'd love to see them stay local, obviously. Uh, one other recruit I wanted to talk about is Tennessee Rainwater. Yeah. 6'6 kid out of Davenport, Washington. I love the yeah, name, the name alone. Yeah. Tennessee Rainwater. <laughs> first team all name. Dunk. <laughs> Rainwater for three. He's raining threes. I mean, you yeah. have so much fun with that kid's name. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. When I first saw it, we were looking at him and uh, give Gib saw him early, way early in his uh, er, uh, junior year. After his junior year, we saw him, and he was on a team that had a couple kids. One kid went to uh, Virginia, 
uh, a big kid who was really good. And then at old point guard, we got involved with a little bit. He went to Idaho State as well. So he was. There's a team that we really liked. We followed him around all summer last uh, last year. And and when I when I saw his name on the thing, I thought, wow, Tennessee Racist. You know. And then it's you know his his mom and dad are great. He's got a little. His dad is. Uh, it says the rainwater comes from his dad. I'm trying to think what he is. Um, I think he's Navajo, I think. But anyway, it's really cool. It's a cool story with him too as well. And um, they came on a visit, uh, his dad, and just fell in love with this place. I mean, that was, like I said, that was the the thing. But to where he came from and where he, you know, his high school hasn't done anything until this year. They just took off and they won state. and He won a ton of awards. Um, you know, great player. He reminds me a lot of Pope. Okay. Um, you know, he plays a lot like that where he can multiple play positions. multiple positions. Um, he can really get to the basket. He's strong. Um, I, I don't think he can play the point like Pope did, but I could see him playing the two and the three and the four. Um, just a strong kid. I mean, he's got a great body for a high school, come, just coming out of high school. But, yeah, he's he's one that, you know, that I think could do some damage as well. Uh, any other new recruits we should touch on? Yeah, we got I mean, we got another ju- some new Jucos, too, from Garden City. We have David um elliot elliot yeah a little point guard another one and then we also have larry say that last name for me <laughs> larry oleinka <laughs> you're gonna have to learn all these names buddy but uh i love Ole-inka? larry is that yeah, i think is you're that close. close yeah but uh larry his name's larry thank goodness so yeah. we call him larry yeah <laughs> so uh but yeah he's he's those are both juco kids i think will was that will a package us. deal some they both, play? they both play the same place yeah they both play they came on the visit together um and in fact david's dad uh and his mom kind of brought and larry's mom did come with him on the trip but it was fun to again it was a late late one that we got we just needed some more some more juco kids we felt and uh, these guys were getting recruited pretty hard brought them on campus and they same thing they're like wow this place is is unreal and and we we say all the time to our ad and our president i mean we get these guys on campus it it changes the world they love our facilities number one they love the town the mountains and how nice people are and it's just it's it's just a nice nice thing to have um you know to to have these kind of guys get that experience here what what what, um what do you feel like the the chemistry is like so far? And I know some of that we'll have to wait till fall to see rotations. Mm-hmm. I mean, this going into the season, I have so I'm excited because I'm sure you're excited too because you probably have a guess at who could be starters. But yeah. until you get to fall camp and really get going, you probably don't know, don't know. who's going to really rise to the top and who's going to be in the rotation and yeah. who's not. This year, more than any of the year, we, you're right. I mean, we 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 say that every year. When the year's over, we sit down with our guys and talk about things that they need to work on, talk about things we can do better as a staff. Uh, we we do all that, and, and we start from there and say, hey, you know what, next year's a whole new year. It starts over. So if this because you're starting this year, I mean, next year you have to work. This spring, this summer, you have to work really hard to keep your starting position, and those who aren't starting – Here's your chance to prove it to us that you want to start, and and this year it's it's uh, it's wide open because of of so many new players, and so we're we're trying different things, we're trying different you know, but still so early. There's still two guys that we've signed that that aren't here yet, um, that they're still working on some academics uh, with their JUCOs and so forth. So we have to wait for them, and that won't be till almost till school starts. They're going to be a little bit behind. Um, but, but again, we're sending tape to them We're they're watching our practices. They're trying to catch on what we're doing. So when they do come they're, you know, they're ready to go. So that, that's kind of what we're doing, but you're right. It's wide open and it's, it's sometimes it's frustrating because I, I, I get a habit of doing this. I kind of think this is last year's team. And I'm like, Hey, we're so far behind, you know, where we used to do that. We're doing this at this time and we're so far behind, but, but it's new. It's just brand new. We got to slow down. We have to teach them. We have to show them everything where we don't have those guys that, uh, you know, that already know what to do and say, just follow those guys. And so it's good and bad. It's good and bad, but I, it, it's exciting. And change is good. And, uh, you know, sometimes you, you can't wait to get rid of your team and start over. And sometimes you wish you didn't last year. I wish I could have kept a lot more of those guys, but I'm really excited what I have. And coach, uh, we talked about it in nauseum this off season, but Todd Simon leaves SUU, Mark Madsen leaves UVU mass exoduses with both of those rosters due to graduation transfer portal guys and what is the outlook on the whack your early take on it who's going to with sam houston gone as well what is your early take on the outlook for the whack going in uh, that, that's a good question there's a lot of changes um this year in the whack sam houston also leaving as well new mexico state leaving as yeah. well 
um, that there's, there's two really good teams that, I mean, New Mexico state had last year there that year. That's the year they want to hopefully okay. just throw away. That's just a bad, but, but that coach who left Sam Houston now is at New Mexico state. But again, they're not in our league anymore. Uh, but we will be playing them, um, probably in the future because we are doing kind of like that little challenge that we have. Um, and, and they'll be doing the, the, what do you call it? The U S with the conference USA was kind of what we're going to be doing. So we could see those guys again around, but, uh, you know, Utah Valley, um, they had, they had a solid, solid team this last year. I thought they were good. And, and I mean, even SU, like you said there, that was kind of what I was hoping for this year is they had all those fifth year senior kids. Yeah. They had a ton of those. So they lost a lot, uh, but with their coach, but also with their, with their players, but Utah Valley did a good job recruiting. They did get the Drake Allen kid from Cedar that transferred there, but there's an, another, were you, and, were you guys on? Yeah, there's and, another NL ideal yeah, right mm-hmm. there. We're talking about, um, they got a, the seven footer from Utah state that we tried to get as well. There's another NL ideal that we lost on. And so th- they're going to be solid again. And I'm, I'm, I was really happy for Utah Valley because they stayed in house and they hired Todd. I thought that was really classy on their part there's nothing more frustrating as an assistant that you're working your tail off and then there's a chance to get the head job and you don't get it um and and so i was really happy for for todd and he'll he'll do good he you know he's he's been successful at the juco level and and now i've seen him at the here he'll, he'll do he'll do fine um i think Stephen austin will be there again i think grand canyon's loaded up again they hit that they hit that portal pretty hard um they're using that nca tournament uh, appearance this year recruiting and they're getting a lot of they always do get a lot of transfers um you know that again you go to their games it's crazy it's a fun atmosphere so i, I think the wax going to be solid again i think it's going to be just like it was uh, you know seattle will be there again they they th- we thought they might lose one that tyson kid to the nba thing he put his name in then he came back right um and so i think they're going to be solid again with us but Again, I think the WAC's in good shape. I think, you know, looking at the 33 conference teams, we were ranked 11th in the in all the conferences. I think that's really, really good and really fair, and I think it's going to get better and better. Real quickly, we've got about 40 seconds, Juddy, but can you tell us some of the non-conference games that will be on the schedule? The schedule um, hasn't come out on the website yet. Should be WAC schedules should come out in a matter of yeah, days the WAC, or weeks. Well, the WAC just barely came out. The good thing about the WAC this year that I love is we're playing everybody home and home. You know, where the last couple of years you'd have, you played one. Yeah. You know, we two. played Sam Houston. We played Stephen F. Austin once. Um, yeah, we did play Utah Valley twice and SU twice, but it's hard to get a champion out of that. So now we're playing everybody home and home, which is going to be nice. Um, conference, uh, non conference games, we got uh, some bye games. We got Colorado at Colorado. We got uh, Santa Ana, Santa Clara. Okay. Um, and we have Washington State, Big Bell. You better nice. come on up, man. You better come up. Uh, Going to the Pullman, huh? So, yeah, we're, those are kind of our bye games. We have Idaho coming in. We went there last year. And then we got to go to, um, and then we have North Dakota coming in that we went to their place last year. And then we have to go to CSUN is, uh, is where we go. They came here last year. So those are the ones that we have to do and and um, we're it's gonna be fun we're really excited it started i love it john judkins everybody head coach of the trailblazer men's basketball team new look roster can't wait till uh fall we'll get going and of course we'll have all the trailblazer games right here on the fan sports network your home for trailblazer football and basketball Juddy, great to see you enjoy the rest of your summer and i I know uh you get a little time more time for the family got a wedding coming up right yeah is this congratulations on that we had a missionary. We had a baby. We've, we've had it all this summer. It's been a lot of fun. Well, enjoy it, and I uh, can't wait to see you back in the Burns Arena hey, real soon. Hey, thank you. We'll take a break. We'll be back on the Fan Sports Network. Lots more coming up after this timeout.